Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on The Flash Season 6. And this is going to be my review for Episode 16 for this season, otherwise entitled So Long and Good Night. So of course, we're back from like a five or six week break um, because of the unforeseen circumstances going around the world, which did delay The Flash a bit. Uh, but of course, you know, spoiler alert. So if you've not uh, watched the episode, go watch it, then come back to this video later on. Uh, if you're going to enjoy it and you've watched the episode, um, leave a like on it. It'd be awesome if you could do that. Let me know your various opinions in the comment section down below. Curious to see what you guys thought of the episode and all that. And I guess if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe as well. So last episode, and you might think that you might need like an encyclopedia or like some sort of history book to, you know, figure out what happened last episode because it was so long ago. From memory, it was just the death of, no, it wasn't the death of the Speed Force. It was the, uh, the exor exorcism of Nash Wells where we saw Nash deal with re reverse flash. But obviously towards the end of the episode, we saw Barry, you know, tell uh, Caitlin and Cisco that, yo, I'm going to be using the book. Uh, well, Nora's journal to try and figure out how to, uh, you know, build this new speed force because there was intel there from Reverse Flash as well. Now, unfortunately, with that, um, you know, that, you know, setup from last episode, that doesn't really play out this episode. We just get like a line from Cisco talking about how there's like all these different simulations going on um, and tests going on, but he can do them. They can go on without him being there. So that's like the reference to it. And that's really it outside of like Barry, you know, not using his speed that much or he's slowing down a bit because of what's happening so no real development there in regards to building this new speed force so i'm going to guess that happens next episode with cisco and others so yeah it is also important to remember that caitlin wasn't in this episode i don't know if danielle panabaker was gone at this stage and she won't be back for the rest of the season uh because of her pregnancy so i'm not too sure what's happening there but yeah we start off the episode with joseph carver in his home it's a bit of a flex it's a very nice home he's with his like assistant i'm assuming he was and we just get the sound of ragdolls crunching and breaking bones above them. It's quite gross. Now, Ragdoll is given the job of taking out Joe West uh, due to Joe's like relentless attempts to connect the various mercenaries to Joseph Carver. So that's pretty much a lot of the episode. I really did like the episode with what happened with Ragdoll. Now, I did find it funny that Barry's not the best at Pictionary, but he is saving his speed, I guess. There's no using it there. I did see some people on Twitter saying that like, oh, well, didn't he draw the picture of uh, the monitor last uh, in Elseworlds? But that was actually Oliver as Barry. So Oliver's got the artistic skills. Barry, unfortunately not, apparently according to this episode. Not the best of Pictionary. But we do have Singh wanting Joe to like step back off the case with Carver and sort of maybe going to like witness protection and everything like that. And Joe's sort of like, no, I'm not going to do that. And then we end up seeing Joe getting in a car accident where Ragdoll appears to be in the car. Um, like from, from a, like the bottom, you can see like Ragdoll apparently looking up at Joe. And then like a tiny bit later in the episode, Barry actually confirms it was Ragdoll because one of the hairs from Ragdoll was in the car. So yeah, Ragdoll uh, can fit in some tight spaces. <laughs> Now we do have the, the real Iris talking about getting someone in who can like destabilize to help them, you know, get out of the mirror world, which is of course Barry or the Flash. And then Iris just goes ahead and just tells Eva that Barry's the Flash, like willy nilly. Um, I guess it's, we can just do that now. But of course this pretty much lines up with Eva's plan and now Mirror Iris's job or Mariris, uh, her job is now to push Barry along so he drains his speed faster. We don't see a ridiculous amount of that in this episode. It's really just towards the end that really happens. Um, but yeah, that, that, that was like, I guess, Mira Iris' job for the episode. Now, we did have like a side story in this episode involving like Sue Dibney, as I guess is like the main point of it. But, but we did have um, Cisco and Ralph at like an, an investment brunch on the hunt for um, Sue. Now, we have January Galore from earlier in the season return, but it was actually Sue Dearborn in disguise. Now, it's her disguise, but it makes you wonder, was it actually her disguised as January Galore earlier in the season as well at that, like that arms dealing? I think it was episode, I think it was episode six. Don't quote me on that. I think it was episode six. I guess we can believe that she has used, I think one or two other disguises throughout the season. I think she used one back in episode, well, she's only been in two episodes. So I guess she used one in episode 12, which was like her as like a, a cop or something or like a security guard who was another female, another blonde female, but it was in January Galore. I went back and had a look. They didn't look the same at least. Um, so I don't know if January Galore is a real person. They, they apparently she's like this big arms dealer and stuff. So I don't know if it was actually Sue impersonating her the whole time, or just at this point at the investment brunch, she was impersonating January Galore. I'm unsure. If anyone wants to let me know, let me know. But she gets away with, um, uh, ease, I guess. And she actually gets away with access to quite a lot of assets. If she chooses. I think Ralph said there was like 7 billion or something there. So that's quite a lot. Now, one of the, my favorite scenes in this episode was actually Joe talking to sunshine, not necessarily them having a conversation, but ragdoll coming out of that, like evidence box behind him was creepy as hell. 
And then just like when he gets out, eventually like spinning the way he did to catch the bullets and launch them back at Joe. Barry obviously not fast enough once he get there to stop one of the bullets hitting Joe on the shoulder due to the lack of speed he has at the moment. But this was like the ragdoll I've been wanting. He's been in two episodes before this one. The first one, he was wasted. The second one, he wasn't the main focus. So he wasn't, you weren't really expecting him to be, you know, there a lot. But I think they nailed ragdoll in this episode. I really liked him in this episode. And I hope if he does appear in episodes in the future, they go with him like this. This this was like perfect ragdoll in my opinion. But we do have Joe going to Carver's like uh, residence, pretty much like not as a cop, like goes without the badge and everything like that. And he goes there to get like a confession of sorts, I guess you could say from Carver. Now we have Carver using a localized EMP from his watch, I think it was his wristwatch, to delete the recording of Joe's phone. Wouldn't it just cut Joe's phone off completely? I don't know, anyway. But it does put Joe more on the radar and then, you know, puts the icing on the cake, I guess, in regards to him being hunted by punching Carver after Carver threatens us to seal and his daughter. But one of the other connections in this episode with Joseph Carver was the whole Sue storyline and Ralph figures out that Sue is after Joseph Carver after learning that her parents seem to be getting blackmailed by him. And that is what Sue has been, you know, doing in regards to traveling the world is like investigating him. Now we do have Sue give Ralph the diamond from her last appearance. If you remember at the end of that episode, it had like the black hole symbol on it and like it's going to have some information. So obviously Ralph's going to be dealing with that whenever he then he's like i guess the next story arc would be i hope it's next episode but it might not be till episode 18 we've only got a couple of episodes left this season um so i'm intrigued to see what they do with that in regards to ralph having that diamond and what gets revealed for either just him personally or even just team flash now cecile getting caught by ragdoll was expected we knew she was caught by ragdoll going by the trailer and the primary images but he does take out nash and allegra in the process i think that's their only scenes in the episode like they probably shouldn't just they should probably just should not have been in the episode at all to be completely honest um because i just thought it was a bit random they could just had cecile getting caught but we find out like or we learn that allegra is still upset with nash in that scene so or the scene beforehand so yeah now the flash versus ragdoll scene i i don't know i'm trying i'm still trying to think at the moment what was my favorite one was it that one or was it the ragdoll in the when joe was in uh like talking to sunshine i think it might be the flash versus ragdoll scene now the more i think about it because this is the, like the flash versus ragdoll scene and fight scene we've been waiting for him hiding in the pipes with his abilities um i thought it was just funny him like going hmm 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 and everything like that his voice was really cool as well like a fun fact ragdoll was actually voiced by phil lamar who voiced um who did he voice in justice like i think it was i think it was john stewart I was going to say My Martian Manhunter, but it wasn't him. It was, uh, he voiced Jon Stewart in the Justice League animated series, so, you know, Green Lantern. He's done, like, heaps of other voice roles as well, and I think it was really cool that he um, voiced Ragdoll. He even voiced uh, Malefic on Supergirl earlier this season as well. So he's a very good voice actor, and I think he fit Ragdoll as well. Um, that whole scene I thought was really cool. I thought the Flash suit looked really cool in that scene as well. Great lighting for the Flash suit. Now, we did have Cecile on, like, pressure-activated chairs with bomb attached to it. That's probably the best description I could give to it. Now, Joe removes her and sits on it himself, um, but he's actually able to disable the bomb just before it goes off. I think it was, like, maybe several seconds left on it. But Joe realizes at that point that he needs to go into witness protection because he's not just putting himself at risk. He's putting his wife, oh, his partner and his daughter at risk as well. Now, him going to witness protection, I think it was a bit strange that Cecile and Jenna, his daughter, wouldn't go with him as well. Um, I don't know if there was an actual reason given in the episode why they wouldn't go and why it's just him. If anyone wants to enlighten me, feel free to, but yeah. But one of the bigger reveals in this episode was Captain Singh in the car. And as soon as I went to the car, I was like, I know what's going to happen here. And that's when we see that he's actually a mirror version. So the mirror version of Singh under the orders of Eva. This is like many were thinking would be the case. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I just think like they could have chosen like another interesting, like someone maybe in Team Flash as well. That could have been a big reveal. Like we could have learned that like, I don't know, like maybe like Ralph or something was actually controlled. And that's why maybe he hasn't been in this season too much. That could have been a good thing. Like he was doing his own thing. Um, but it was Captain Singh. I think we can live with that, but I'm intrigued to see if they do anything more with him this season or that's it. It was just to sort of get Joe away. I don't know. I have to wait and find out. But the second last scene in this episode was Joseph Carver going back to his flex and, uh, you know, his flex of a home, I guess you could say, with a gift that is a wrapped gift and it's actually a mirror. So Eva contacts him through it. So I'm guessing, did Mirror Iris put it here or Mirror Camilla or Mirror Singh? I don't know who put it there, but Eva contacts him through it. And Eva wants an apology for him. And uh, Carver just giggles at that. And he's like, uh, how about no? Which Eva isn't too happy about. So that whole storyline is heating up. I'm intrigued to see where it goes. Next episode is called Liberation. My trailer breakdown for that will be up tomorrow or whenever you watch it. Maybe in a couple of hours when you watch this video, depending on when you watch it. Um, that should be the episode where Eva gets out based off what the title is. Um, so I'm just interested to see where that whole, whole story goes. I know people aren't into it. I know people aren't into it. But to me... I'm into it until it ends, and then I judge it off once it ends. I'm like, okay, was it good? 
how it ended or was it just terrible? I'm, I'm intrigued to see where it goes. It's intriguing me at the moment. And I can't wait to see where it goes. Um, just because, you know, with Black Hole, you never know what's going to go on. It can, it's always a mystery. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see where it goes. But the final scene was the big one. And it's been the one that I think uh, Eric Wallace and even like, I think some of the actors have been teasing. And that was the Iris and Barry scene or the West Allen scene at the end. So we have Mira Iris like acting angry that Barry didn't come to get her in regards to um, like her father or her pretend father, whatever, uh, Joe going to witness protection or going into witness protection. And we have Mira Iris like demanding Barry take her to Joe. And the argument was just crazy and a bit random. It went from zero to 100 really quickly. But you can see at the point that Iris says that they have both lost their parents and that it's almost like Barry's fault that they've lost both their parents now, that Barry realizes that Iris is acting super, super strange and something is up. So West Allen is on the rocks. Barry's been kicked out of apartment five. Was really hoping for an apartment four cameo. Unfortunately, we did not get it. Uh, <laughs> you can't get, you can't win them all, I guess. But um, I'm intrigued to see where that goes, um, and when, how long it takes this, because that, that's weird that like, that Mira Iris would do that, because that's like so random that Barry's going to catch on and then think it's going to be a bit of a, like an like a diss track and expose um, video coming out like next episode or something. So it was very random. So I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes next episode in regards to how Barry responds to it. Like what's his response video to that diss track from Iris or Mira Iris. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see, but <sighs> crazy ending. But um, yeah, guys, that was a solid episode. It was a solid episode to come back to. Um, like I think it was very awkward in regards to this is the episode that we came back with from, uh, we came back to in regards to, uh, just after a five week break. It's not that like, the episode I think we all wanted, but it's still a solid episode that pushed the plot further with a different couple of storylines that all really connected to Black Hole. So I think it was very important that they all did that. Um, so a solid episode, nothing groundbreaking, nothing like, oh my God, what the hell's going on here outside of maybe that end scene. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed watching it. I thought it was fun in certain parts and Ragdoll was just awesome to see again. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. If you could drop a like on it to show support, let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on this episode. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What were your favorite bits? Just let me know all your thoughts and opinions down there in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs>